Hello, welcome to our Microsense webinar. In this presentation, I would like to introduce you a new approach for building automation as an alternative solution for the conventional way of doing building automation today. Um, but before we do this, or before that happens, I will start with a short introduction to show you a typical sample of conventional building automation today based on an automated ventilated unit, which is very common in smart buildings. A usually kind of installation look like this. We have here the ventilating unit, shown on the left side. We have the control cabinet, which is providing the automation functionality, usually by a PLC or a DDC controller. And both are connected over cabling uh, conventional cabling mounted in cable trails. So to analyze the structure of our sample ventilating unit, we can transfer it into a layer model for conventional automation system, which is looking like this. So you see here the different layers. We will start from the bottom one, which is the field and I.O. layer. In this layer we will find all the sensors, actuators and bus systems for collecting all the physical information directly from the field. In this area we will find temperature sensor, pressure sensors, valve actuators and so on. And also the mentioned bus systems like KNX, LON, Modbus and so on. All the sensors and actuators are connected by wire or by bus system directly to the automation layer. Uh, where uh, the PLCs or the DDC controller mentioned before are located, mostly mounted in cabinets. And uh, f uh, this layer is connected over the network with the management uh, layer. Additionally, the network layer um, is provided the complete network infrastructure for building, building automation system, which allows wants to, net uh, to connect and to network uh, all the PLCs, but also to provide the data transfer from the automation layer to the management layer, where is the common BMS platform. On the top, we will see uh, the layer which is uh, responsible for cloud services, but this is still the exception today. Um, Actually, the majority of conventional BMS systems provide none or less cloud services or functionality. But nevertheless, uh, these features and functions will be the technology of tomorrow or the future technology. And uh, it has still start today with uh, implementations on this layer. So what are the typical characteristics? So first uh, is mentioned uh, that uh, we have uh, conceptually the same approach as 25 years ago. What does it mean? Uh, this means that 25 years ago we had the first change of, um, uh, in the area of automation because 25 years ago we start with the uh, change from the analog technology to the first uh, programmable units that was the area from the DGC controller. And um, this in this period, um, um, unit had um, pe uh, performance or use a microcontroller uh, which has maybe eight bit um, resolution, and the performance was, according to the, uh, to today, very low. Today we run 64 bit uh, controller, and um, this is, I think, the the main change that the automation layer becomes more performant, but the structure, uh, I mentioned uh, this in the picture before, cabinets, conventional cabling and so on, has remained the same. Second characteristic is building management platforms for building automation are primarily based on BACnet. BACnet is uh, a standard for building automation. Uh, BACnet stands for Building Automation Control Network and is very common in buildings uh, for building uh, in the building automation area. Other typical characteristic of conventional building automation is the parallel use of many different protocols and systems like KNX, LON, BACnet, Modbus, DALI or SMI. 
uh, I defined uh, the name Babylonian Protocol Diversity because this um, uh, description um, shows very uh, or stands very fine for the parallel use of many languages uh, in a building automation system. So another characteristic is that building automation today uh, needs to run on their own network infrastructure. So uh, why this happens is mentioned in this in the next um, characteristic that the there's a weak or no impact on network security and redundancy mechanism so that the IT section is not uh, willing to um, include this uh, weak and security networks in their own network infrastructure. Um, what is also typical is that we have a conventional discrete sensors and actuators on the I.O. level and uh, we will um, um, see that there is no IP-based sensors and actuators uh, available on market. All this uh, lead to the situation that we have a high amount of mechanical installation for control cabinets, cabling, cable trays and so on. And uh, if we uh, see on this topic, we can understand why because of the uh, high amount of mechanical installation, we have also extensive planning and engineering. So facing all of these facts and keeping in mind that Microsense is a manufacturer of structured network infrastructure components, we started to develop a real alternative approach for building automation based on network and IT standards. And the result is this. We call it NESTA. NESTA is standing for Network Embedded Software Defined Automation. And is uh, a new approach for doing automation by uh, doing this out of the network. So, let's have a, uh, before we go uh, um, to the next, uh, um, or before I show you more detailed the approach, let's have shortly a look how networks are used uh, today in a um, conventional building automation system. So what we recognize is that we have, uh, in general, many uh, several or several uh, subsystems um, in a building which uh, run mostly on their own network or. Mm, data infrastructure and um, if we see this concept um, and uh, think about what we talked before then uh, the uh, approach from Microsense or the way how Microsense thinks about building automation for today is presented here. Microsense is thinking in we have one big network which provides the data and IT infrastructure for all the several subsystems in the building. So how does it look in the detail? So we have here, for example, a small simplified uh, example uh, from a network. Um, the picture in the middle, the core network rep uh, is uh, representing the completely core network in the building. Uh, on this is connected on the top, the building management uh, layer. And uh, on the bottom side, we have um, um, connected um, switches, which are representing distributed automation devices, uh, which are running uh, the several automation functionality directly out of the network. So typically for this structure is that we have a distributed architecture, which is uh, PLC, uh, the w where the automation is PLC based. And we have a central monitoring uh, providing on the management layer. We have an easy installation. Why easy? Because we can do this installation controller after controller, room by room, uh, during a running system. And um, uh, by um, doing this, we have also uh, a high reliability because if a failure happens, the failure has only an impact to the local unit, which is uh, which creates the error or the failure 
um, the integration in a sense uh, we can integrate the devices uh, on a central control on demand uh, this means that uh, we have the possibility to do the building automation step by step in the building so uh, but now i would like to come back uh, to the the layer model from before and um, the big question is what is difference or how the differences to the microsense concept or approach uh, are defined and where are they located so if you come back to this uh, uh, layer model we had before uh, for uh, used before for the description of the conventional building automation we see here again we have a field IO layer which sensors actuators automation layer network automation layer management layer and cloud services so first step what we have done is we uh, developed a device which is called smart air controller and this smart air controller enables us to use conventional devices and bring them directly into the network from the field into the network so we have done the same for lighting by doing um, connecting the lighting functionalities directly to the network so what you can see here we jump over a layer the automation layer and uh, this automation layer w which was in the past responsible for doing the automation is in our case not really necessary because we have implemented into the network layer uh, software defined PLC or soft PLC which is taking uh, all or covering all the tasks for automation which in the past were installed in the automation layer this means in the cabinets which are were well located in the automation layer by doing this the traditional automation technology with PLC in the control cabinet is replaced by software defined control on the switch and uh, we have uh, the we jump directly from the field into the network and provide automation out of the network the top layers management layer and cloud services are uh, still remaining uh, the same like before they cover the same functionalities the main difference is that the automation layer has been virtualized uh, by transferring his functionality into the network layer this means into the switches how does it look like so uh, and what is uh, the the nice thing uh, by the way we can provide from the field to the uh, top management layer to the cloud level one IP uh, infrastructure which makes uh, the handling for the IT guys much more easier so let's have a look how the system is consisting and how it looks like so we will start again by our PLM we use the PLM in this example our smart engine on this smart engine we have connected over a smart lighting controller an LED panel and the smart lighting controller is connected via uh, PoE uh, connection over a patch cable directly to the switch so uh, we run the lighting uh, over PoE on this case and uh, the functionality uh, power supply and uh, functionality this means data are provided over the switch so we use uh, for collecting the different uh, sensor signals from the room we like switch buttons climate units blind controls and so on we use a wireless uh, connection uh, via an ocean and uh, for all devices which are not able to be transferred via an ocean we have developed a smart air controller i mentioned uh, this before and he covered the rest of the conventional sensors and actuators are located inside the room so inside the PLM we have located uh, the soft PLC uh, which is called micro RTS or a smart director app which is a small script based automation platform uh, for uh, covering the automation functionality the programming of uh, the soft PLC is doing by microsys microsys is our engineering platform which is IC 611.31.3 uh, um, conform uh, this means it meets all the 
um, industrial standards for programming uh, of PLCs. So, and it makes uh, it very easy for an automation guy who knows how uh, industrial PLCs uh, get programmed to, uh, to use our system. So, with microservices, we write the program, make the compile, and uh, make uh, parallel also the download to the engine where the micro ATS or the soft PLC is uh, running the programmed application from microservices. So, for the visualization, we have an embedded web server inside, and uh, we can do a local um, web server. We can run this local web server as local uh, user interface with small graphics, for example, to run blinds, to switch lights, um, to set temperature values, and so on, as local uh, user interface. Uh, we can uh, get access to this web server over standard smartphone, tablet, PC. So what you see here is, in general, the, the main idea behind our system. And uh, if uh, we go, uh, want to come back to the characteristics, we have a uniform data infrastructure from the field to the management layer. This means that we run only ether uh, Ethernet from bottom to the top. Uh, we have high IT security level through secure open IT standards and protocols. We have encryption, HTTPS, SNMP, V3. Um, the unification of communication protocols and interfaces by using IT standards, like here, uh, is given. So. Uh, we have a structured cabling based on cut and fiber optic standards from the field to the management level. Reduction of the hardware components, control cabinets, cabling and cable um, uh, trays and routes. Um, I will come to this uh, some pages later. Then you will see how easy and how standardized uh, this part is uh, done if you use Nesta. Um, also very important is that by um, the using of our concept, the reduction of file loads and associated, uh, associated measures um, is uh, given. And um, we have a simplification of planning execution like mentioned before. And finally, the integration of smart lighting. Um, we have additionally to the automation functionality also uh, the integration of lighting over the network by uh, using the PoE. So, how does it look like? Um, here we have a sample for a smart lighting concept. You see we have here a core network which is connected with the local smart engine. This is the PoE uh, power supply. And we have here our smart light controller which is a sensor and the LEDs. W until this point, we have network. Here's the power supply of each uh, LED, and uh, this is the sensor. With a smart sensor, we cover presence uh, detection, temperature, and humidity, and also brightness. So this is a typical sample for a PoE feeded uh, lighting directly out of the network. Additional to this, we, has, uh, we have also a DC lighting concept based on the central smart light controller. Uh, the big advantage of the uh, central smart light controller is we use the um, standard um, cut cabling for networking also for the connection of the lights. We have here AG45 connectors to connect um, over standard patch cable directly uh, uh, LEDs. And we have also um, AG45 connectors for connect the sensors, which are um, responsible for uh, cover, um, catching motion, brightness, temperature, and humidity into the building. So here you have a look how our hardware is looking like. On top, we have the central smart light controller like uh, I uh, before described. 
and uh, you see you have here RG45 connectors where we can connect the several LED lamps. Um, we have here the connectors for the CAN bus, is which is uh, also uh, using the RG45 and uh, CAT5 uh, cabling. And um, on the top we have here the two uplinks for the connection to the network. This uh, device uh, provides here directly DC power outputs, which are using only the CAT cable infrastructure for the connection or the connectivity. The in the uh, line here at this point, we have the smart light controller, which is our device we use for uh, lighting over PoE. We have here a uh, standard um, PoE input and uh, data port, and uh, this is the connection port for the smart sensor. Um, then we have here our smart I.O. controller for digital and analog uh, in inputs. We have, the uh, we have uh, developed both devices because um, on the smart air controller digital, we use mainly uh, digital inputs and outputs. And the smart IO analog uh, controller, um, we have in uh, the focus for uh, analog controls applications. So on the bottom line, we see our smart sensor. This is the conventional one. And this is the smart sensor for the CAN bus version, which is used uh, with the central smart light controller on the top. The conventional smart sensor is uh, used for the SLC um, approach. And on the right side, we have the PLM and the micro uh, switch. Um, these are standard switches. Um, this uh, on top, the PLM is the industrial switch. And this is the micro switch we use for our uh, room uh, applications uh, as platform for the uh, application. Uh, at this point, I have to mention that in all our platforms, this means the sensor smart light controller, the PLM, and the micro switch, we can install our PLC automation uh, platform uh, for doing all the applications we need for uh, raw automation and building automation. So, on the next page, we see how it looks like uh, in real if you uh, have the smart light, uh, smart light controller in action. Here's the smart light controller with a naked LED here which is without a uh, driver. It's only the LED device connected by two wires uh, on the output of the smart light controller. The uh, smart I.O. sensor is connected over this small cable on the smart uh, sensor port. And this is the data and PLE port coming directly from the switch. So, so next, uh, um, example or best practice sample, I mentioned before that we reduced the, the usage of hardware and cabinets. Uh, here we see, uh, here we have a standardized um, cabinet with pre-cabled devices. We see here the power supply. We see a PLM with his extension devices pre-wired on AG45 connectors. On the left side, we have some fuses which provide maybe uh, 230 volt circuits for several needs. And uh, this completely device is called smart distribution box uh, and um, could, seen, could be seen as a multipurpose cabinet. What I will mention or what I will uh, say with this, we will see in the next picture. So we have again here, for example, our um, ventilating device. And if you remember back, this ventilating device was connected on the first page over a cable tray and conventional cabling to a conventional cab um, cabinet. Uh, in our approach, we don't do this uh, like this, but we, we install the smart I.O. Uh, or not the smart I.O., the smart distribution box, sorry, uh, directly on the device, like here. 
we use some smart IO controller which are also installed locally on the um, HVAC device. In our example or sample here is a ventilating unit. And um, the programming or the functionality is uh, defined only over software inside the switch. In our case, the PLM. So this means that uh, we, uh, we collect all the local data like sensors, uh, actuators, and so on over the smart air controller, bring them directly, uh, collect them over a PoE port to the PLM, and the program and the functionality of this uh, ventilating unit, for example, is defined by software which is running inside the switch. On top, we have the management uh, layer or management uh, level, which is directly connected with an uplink uh, to the PLM. So um, you see, we run here a switch locally on the ventilating device or unit uh, connected. We are uplink to the management layer and doing the automation by running a program on the local installed um, soft PLC. So. You see, this is an example how we eliminate the cabinet, the conventional cabinet, uh, for uh, running the automation for this ventilating device by using this smart distribution box. And now, the simplification of planning uh, of cabinets will shown uh, on the right side of the presentation. We have here a room, uh, an office, which is representing uh, room automation. We use, again, the exactly the same distribution box connected over an uplink uh, to the management layer. And then we connect some smart light controller over PoE uh, for PoE lighting. We cover with uh, the Enotion uh, protocol wireless um, switches, for uh, buttons, uh, devices for uh, climate control like temperature sensors in the room or blind actuators. We are connected by cable and provide also over the micro switch, which is located here um, with uh, network. And we provide also over PoE a voice over P for the phones and VLAN activity. So what you can see here is very nice. We have one developed uh, smart distribution box used in two totally different application cases. In one case, the w this box is a room automation cabinet. In this case, this box is a ventilating unit cabinet. And uh, if you uh, see this picture, you understood that planning of cabinets will be uh, simplified or to the absolutely minimum. So this means we have only to, to cover the power connections for the ventilating device, which could be covered directly from the power distribution cabinet from the floor and uh, all the automation functionality is covering by this box. So this means that if I have many of those kind of devices, I don't make a dedicated planning for cabinets for each device, but I use for each device an own uh, smart distribution box. And uh, to do this is uh, quite more easier as instead to make a dedicated planning for cabinets. So um, this was uh, the description of the system. And um, make a short summary of what I've mentioned before. Uh, the microsense approach provides highly, effic uh, highly efficient LED technology. Um, we have a distributed network embedded building automation system. Um, we have the reduction of conventional hardware and their engineering. If uh, we have a um, remember our smart distribution boxes, which uh, save a lot of time for planning, engineering, installation. And um, finally, all those uh, leads to a standardization of planning processes or make, for example, standardization of planning process much more easier compared to the conventional approach. On the security level, we can um, run the uh, high IT security level provided by the uh, own IT administration. And uh, this is something which in the past was not given because 
building automation and IT were two independent worlds. And uh, each of them were responsible to cover their administrative and maintenance tasks. So finally, uh, we come to the topic flexibility. We, uh, because of the step-by-step -step installation, which uh, the system allows us, and because of the software-based and open ID industrial standard, we have um, a lot of uh, uh, time and engineering uh, um, uh, time uh, uh, savings so that uh, we uh, can use this time savings also to, to do the work more flexible and more easier. And uh, finally, the last and most important thing, everything is run over one network for all applications. So, this I come to the end of my presentation. And uh, finally, I would like to mention that after decades of conventional realization of smart buildings uh, on the building automation market, I think it's time for a new approach to meet the high expectations of customers regarding smart buildings. Microsense decided to take this challenge by presenting a new way of thinking for the realization of smart buildings uh, today and in the future, um, and doing this by developing of Nesta, the next generation of building automation. Thank you very much for your attention. I, th uh, I hope that I could give you some new ideas and um, uh, make you uh, curious for the future, what will happen and what uh, we will bring out with uh, uh, or what is coming out with uh, um, the implementation of the system. So I hope you had fun with the presentation and we will see you on the next webinar. Bye bye.